Here's the uh, white birch. I'm going to use some of this. I can take it off without damaging the tree in any way. For a uh, traditional flint and steel fire to start my hobo stove tonight. Okay, should be enough. Alright, it's part one of the flint and steel fire. Well, we're back on the AT. Here's a quick overview of uh, traditional flint and steel. A high carbon piece of steel. This is jute. This is the uh, white birch bark we found earlier. This is shaga. A little piece of quartz. Some charred cloth. A little tin if I want to make more charred cloth. This one is new, so I haven't got around to it yet. A little bag that I was given as a gift. A little piece of, um, looks like, uh, fatwood for a little cord holder there. There's the hobo stove and the wood I intend to use for my little makeshift fire. My camp. Right now we're on the Appalachian Trail. So, I will get going to pulling this jute apart, making a bird's nest, taking that um, cloth there, striking a spark, having catch a spark. I'll put this camera in a spot where hopefully you'll catch me do that. And then um, I guess I'll start uh, a little, maybe some cooking, something like that. Not much to do in camp really. That's good. That's good. There we are. There we go. Look at this. Success. It's done with um, ferrocium rod. Okay, just so people get it, this is the uh, traditional flint and steel. This is a fire steel. Big difference. Once again, traditional flint and steel. This is actually a piece of chert, a piece of carbon steel. You can use anything, even back back end of a knife. This is actually a strike force. Fire steel.